Well, thank you very much. A couple of things happened today that are very exciting. USMCA passed the Senate. It's one of the biggest trade bills ever made. And then yesterday, as you know, China passed, and that's something that is extraordinary. And it's going to have tremendous far-reaching effects, including our relationship long-term with China. Um, our farmers and manufacturers and bankers and everybody. It's jobs. It's jobs like we've never seen before. And that's going to be something very special in USMCA today, which just passed by a very comfortable vote, very high vote. Uh, we are very proud to have that. So we've done two of the biggest trade deals. They are the two biggest trade deals in the world ever done. And uh, we're honored to have done them in a short period of time. Uh, we are gathered in the Oval Office for the National Religious Freedom Day, something very important and very special, and special to me and the people that are gathered around me. This afternoon, we're proudly announcing historic steps to protect the First Amendment right to pray in public schools. So you have the right to pray. And that's a very important and powerful right. There's nothing more important than that, I would say. We're joined by the Secretary of Education, Betsy DeVos, Deputy Attorney General Jeffrey Rosen, and students and advocates from across America. And advocates they were. They've been calling and writing uh, by the thousands. And you're representing that large group of people. In a sacred principle of our republic, that government must never stand between the people and God. Yet, in public schools around the country, authorities are stopping students and teachers from praying, sharing their faith, or following their religious beliefs. It is totally unacceptable. You see it on the football field. You see it so many times where they're stopped from praying. And we are doing something to stop that. Tragically, there is a growing totalitarian impulse on the far left that seeks to punish, restrict, and even prohibit religious expression. Something that, if you go back 10 years, or 15 years, or 20 years, it was unthought of that a thing like that could even happen, that anybody would even think of something like that happening. That is why today my administration is issuing strong new guidance to protect religious liberty in our public schools. The right of students and teachers to freely exercise their faith will always be protected, including the right to pray. So we call this the right to pray. Is that a good idea? Good. Right? You like that, right? <laughs> Nine federal agencies are also proposing new rules to roll back discriminatory regulations. So we have rules to roll back discriminatory regulations on religious service organizations. And earlier this afternoon, my White House released a new memo to make sure federal funding is never used to violate the First Amendment, which is a very big deal. With us today is Hannah Allen, a high school freshman from Texas. Hannah, would you tell us what happened at your school with respect to you and prayer? Hannah? Thank you, though. Right here. So, me and a group of students from my school wanted to pray for our former classmates' brother who had got hurt in an accident. After the prayer, our principal told us, don't do that again. So the next day, parents had called and complained. He told us that we could pray, but he said we had to hide in the gym or behind a curtain or somewhere away from everyone else. And I know that if this can happen in a small town in Texas, it can happen anywhere across America. And that's not right. No one should feel ashamed of their faith, especially in a school or anywhere. Well, and, so, and what, what, so what ultimately happened? How was that resolved? Um, so we got with First Liberty. They've been amazing. They supported us the whole way. And they sent the school letter, and the school complied with the letter and changed it. And now you're able to do that? We are. Good. Well, now it's going to be much easier yet. Okay? All right? Thank you, darling. That was beautiful. Thank you very much. We're also joined by Madeline, Marilyn Rames, a former teacher and the founder of Teachers Who Pray. Marilyn, if you could uh, let us know. Where's Well, good. Thank you very much. Maybe you give us a little bit about what happened. Yes, yeah, so thank you. Um, I'm Marilyn Rames. I'm the founder and president of Teachers Who Pray. And um, I founded Teachers Who Pray because I, as a teacher, 
believe in the, the beauty of every child and the um, unlimited potential that resides within. However, the students that I was getting weren't set up for success because they were so significantly behind grade level. Um, and I taught in Chicago Public Schools for 14 years and during that time we were losing students every year to gun violence. At one year it was like 30, 32 students getting killed and I was overwhelmed with the, the, the heaviness of the work. So I thought about quitting and I, d I decided not to. I was going to fight and I was going to pray and uplift my spirit so that I can do the job that I knew God had called me to do. So I began praying with other teachers in the building who were like-minded and we um, really support each other, built community, built more hope, built more joy in the work despite it being so difficult. And um, we grew, like right now there's over 150 chapters of Teachers Who Pray because teachers need that, that spiritual support and guidance. And today I believe it's super important because there is a, a myth out there that what Teachers Who Pray does and other um, organizations do for teachers, spiritual wealth is not legal and it absolutely is. And I'm here to tell teachers that we need to pray if you're a faith, we need to pray, we need to bu buckle up and just do what we have to do for our kids because they need us and they're depending on us. And if we're not strong, we can't make them strong. So that's why I'm here. That was really beautifully said. Thank you very much. Thank That's you. beautiful. Thanks, Marilyn. So while I'm president, which will be hopefully for five years, and I don't know, maybe we'll work on with the media, we'll work on a major extension of that, right? <laughs> but we will not let anyone push God from the public square. We will uphold religious liberty for all. And I want to thank you all, and God bless you all for being here. Uh, it's a great time in our country. They're doing things that nobody thought were possible. I'd like to ask, uh, if I might, Secretary DeVos and Deputy Attorney General Rosen to say a few words about our actions, if you don't mind. Please. Thank uh, you, Mr. President. Go ahead, Betsy, please. Uh, thank you for your leadership, your courage, and your friendship to people of faith, especially our nation's children. Too many misinterpret a separation of church and state as an invitation for government to separate people from their faith. In reality, our Constitution doesn't exist to protect us from religion. It exists to protect religion from government. The First Amendment affirms our free exercise of religion, and we don't forfeit that first freedom to anyone or in any place, especially in public schools. After all, it's been noted that as long as there are final exams in schools, there will always be prayer in schools. <laughs> but thanks to your leadership, Mr. President, today we remind schools of the law with respect to religious expression, something that hasn't been done in more than 15 years. And where there are violations, we now make clear that the law requires states to establish a clear process for students like Hannah and Michael. William, parents and teachers like Marilyn to report them. It also notes that the law directs states to tell us about any and all complaints as well. This administration and you is and always will be committed to ensuring all believers have the freedom to learn, to pursue our passions, to use our talents, and to live in accordance with the unique purpose that God has called us each to do. If we embrace that freedom, our faith will be a light no darkness can overcome. Thank you again, Mr. Thank President. Thank you very much. Beautiful. Thank you, Betsy, very much. Jeff? <clears throat> well, thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you for your leadership on this really critical issue. There are uh, the fundamental freedom that you've been supporting of Americans to practice their faith uh, is so important and is so appreciated by millions and millions of Americans. And at the Department of Justice, we remain firmly committed to enforcing Americans' constitutional rights, including this one. And so that's part of why I'm very honored and privileged to be a part of today's announcement on the new guidance document about prayer in school. I think sometimes people don't appreciate that there are many, many Americans who feel called to pray during the day, and our First Amendment to our Constitution protects that. And sometimes I think there's a confusion about this issue as to whether it's trying to force people to pray who don't want to. But that's not what this is about. This is about protecting the rights of those who do to have the liberty to do that on school grounds. 
And that is protected by the First Amendment. So, so today's guidance uh, reaffirms and clarifies and spells out for Americans what that uh, freedom is with regards to prayer and uh, religious expression. And I really think that the, the courage of people of, of faith, such as the folks we have here today, is really a reminder of how important uh, our constitutional liberties are and of the great action that, that your administration is taking to ensure that they remain legally protected. And so again, Mr. President, thank I, you, I thank Chairman. you and, and Secretary DeVos and the whole administration for the efforts to make this happen. Very good, Jim. Thank you very much, Jim. Paula, would you like to say something? Go ahead. Uh, it's such an honor to stand here with you, President Trump, and with this amazing team and uh, policy and everyone who has made this. This is a huge thing. As we said, it is a constitutional right, a First Amendment right. And, President, you continue to be such a fighter for people's freedoms, for their liberties. As you often say, we worship God, not government. Perceived and perception has often been people have been bullied, harassed, um, stopped, from practicing their faith. You have so many people that have walked out here very brave with horrific stories of um, being persecuted because they simply wanted to pray. And prayer, as we know, makes a huge difference. So thank you for standing thank for you all much, religious Paula. liberties. That's great. Thank you very much. Would anybody like to say anything? Go ahead. Can I tell my story? Yes. Go ahead. <laughs> So it all started when I walked in the classroom. I was, it was Ash Wednesday, and I had my ashes on my forehead. And the, all the kids in the classroom was like, is that dirt on your forehead? Because they don't know because I'm Catholic and they were all Mormon. So, because I was like, there, I, there was like, I was like the only Catholic in that school. So then the teacher came up and like, it's unacceptable, wipe it off. And I told her four times and she didn't listen and she, made me wipe it off in front of all the kids. Wow. That's my story, so thank you, Mr. President. Well, it's not going to be happening anymore, okay? <laughs> thank you, Mr. All right. I just don't want anyone to feel like that. That's a beautiful, uh, that's a beautiful story well told yeah. because it sets such a, a good plate out there for people. I mean, you hear a story like that. That's a shocking, Jeff, that's a shocking story, right? You were the only Catholic in the school? Well, I think there's one more. But they didn't have any idea what was, <laughs> they just, and the teacher uh, did not treat you properly. No? Okay. We're changing now. Okay? Great job. Come here. <laughs> Anybody over here? Anybody? Sure. Mr. Please. President, thank you so much for the opportunity to be in the Oval Office. So much history has taken place here. It's, it's surreal. Thank you, sir. Okay. My name is Chase Windebank. Uh, I started a small group of students praying in high school during a free period. And, by my senior year, it had grown to a community of 90 students, and it was so encouraging. But, but later in the senior year, the administration wound up banning us from praying during school hours, not even during lunch. And so I remember thinking I didn't want to file a lawsuit at all, but after many meetings unsuccessful with the administration, I wound up realizing it was the only way to secure future students' rights to pray. And so thank you, sir. That now I get to have the opportunity to tell students to live out their faith in big and small right. ways right. in the future. And you guys are making sure that the founding fathers are um, living on in our nation. So thank you, sir, very Beautiful. much. Thank you very much. Thank it's you, very sir. Nice. Yes. Um, I pray five times a day. Oh, my name is Milwaukee Jeff. I pray five times a day, and I had to pray at lunch. And I would bring the hijab to cover my hair, and kids would make fun of me, harass me, and attack me. And I would tell the principal, and the principal actually blamed everything on me at the end. Me and my mom complained so many times, and I didn't have a good education at the end. So, yeah, everything was going down. So we're going to take care of them, right? Yeah. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Okay, well, I want to thank everybody for being here. Did I hear somebody else? Yes, please, go ahead. Hi, my name is Ariana Hoplin. I'm a high school student in South Florida. And in my middle school, I was the only Jewish person. And I was very open with my religion. I would announce when I had Shabbat plans, which is a day of prayer and rest. And when we started our Holocaust unit, it ended with everybody being nice to me because I spoke out about it and I wanted to inform people and I wanted to help people learn. And 
the students started to write swastikas on my belongings, on my arms. Um, I was pushed and shoved in the hallway. They even went so far as to take my face and put it on Anthony's body. And it was sent around to three different schools. And I was terrified to say I was Jewish. And that should never be in anyone's mind. Anyone in school should be able to say, I am whatever religion I am, and I practice this, and I believe this. And it's been three or four years since middle school. I'm a junior in high school, and I've continuously fought for anyone to have the right to exercise their constitutional rights in school. And I just want to thank you so much for everything you've done and for Israel and for everything that you've truly done for all of us. Well, thank you very much. So beautiful. Thank you. It's working out better now, or is it sort of similar? Yes. Um, my high school is extremely supportive of me. I go to Wellington High Good. School. And they've helped me be yeah. a leader in the Jewish community now. Well, this is going to help, too. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. President, uh, Coach yes, Kennedy, yeah, uh, coach? we talked a few times. Uh, I coach up over in Bremerton High School right. in Bremerton, Washington, and I was fired for praying after football games. Right. And it's just so nice to have First Liberty um, representing me and having a president that has the guts to stand up for us. So I appreciate it, sir. Thank you, Coach. You're off. Good coach, too. <laughs> He's a good coach. Oh, Mr. President. Thank you all very much. Yes. My name is Emily Cheney. Um, I'm a sophomore at East Church High School, and I started a prayer locker at my school, and it really helped a lot of people who had different prayer requests. Just Where do you come from with that beautiful accent? <laughs> <laughs> Where do you come from? Pikeville, Kentucky. Kentucky. Oh, we love Kentucky. <laughs> we love Kentucky. I started a prayer locker at my school, and it helped a lot of kids who had many different prayer requests just to let them know that someone was there for them and cared for them. And Americans United for Separation of Church and State sent a letter to our Board of Education that the prayer lockers needed to be taken down. And whenever my teacher told me and my school was notified that I would take my prayer locker down, I was heartbroken because I had like 10 prayer requests a day and that was, I just feel like it really helped move in our community and our schools and I just, I'm just so thankful for you and all you've done. Thank for you very country. much. Thank you. Say hello to everybody in Kentucky for me, okay? <laughs> and beyond. And Thank beyond you. Kentucky. Okay, we're Mr. all set. Mr. President? Yes, please. I come from a, a heritage and from a faith persuasion that every day of my life from childhood to now is grounded in faith. And it is my belief that uh, had we not had that freedom to exercise that faith, we would not be where we are today. And so for that reason, uh, we look at this moment as epic and an opportunity to return to where we have one time been, the opportunity to freely express ourselves and to share with, with others who might feel the same way right. how far we've been brought and how far we must come through faith. Beautiful. So nicely stated. Thank you very much. You were going to say something? Yes, Mr. Yes. President. I want to thank you. Uh, Eric Buer with Gateways to Better Education. Right. And these guidelines haven't been updated and reissued since 2003. Right. And when we saw that and contacted the Department of Education, we were so uh, gratified of the response from Secretary DeVos and others under staff that said, yes, we need to address this and update these. Other administrations should have done it every two years, and it hadn't been done. So thank you so much Perfect. for stepping up and really supporting religious freedom in schools. Well, we covered a lot of territory in here, as you know, because uh, you're right, it's been many years since they were updated. It has. So I think it's very important. Well, thank you all very much. Go ahead. Yeah, Mr. President, tell me a little bit about what many folks, especially folks of faith, view as a cultural war out there. Prayer, a lot of things going on in society. What are your views on this cultural war that we hear so much Well, it is a cultural war, and you have two sides, and uh, you have a side that uh, believes so strongly in prayer, and they're being restricted, and it's getting worse and worse, and I think we've made a big impact, uh, and we're loosening up a lot, and I want to loosen it up totally. But you do have, you have things happening today that 10 or 15 years ago would have been unthinkable what's happening taking the word God down, taking 
the word Christmas out, you know, we, I think we've turned that one around very good. I think we've turned both of them around very good. But we're not going to let it happen. We're never going to let that happen. And we're fighting it hard. You know better than anybody, we're fighting it very hard. And uh, we're opening it up, and we're opening it up again. So stories like you hear, but so many other stories, uh, hopefully in the future, you're not going to be hearing too much about that. Okay? Thank you. Good question. Mr. President, what is your response to Lev Parnas, who says that your efforts in Ukraine were all about 2020? You just wanted Joe Biden out. What's your response? Well, I don't know him. I don't know Parnas, other than I guess I had uh, pictures taken, which I do with thousands of people, including people today that I didn't meet, but uh, just met him. Uh, I don't know him at all, don't know what he's about, don't know where he comes from, know nothing about him. I can only tell you, this thing is a big hoax. It's a big hoax. Uh, we call it uh, — this is the current hoax. We've gone through the Russian witch hunt. Uh, we've gone through a lot of them, from probably before I came down the escalator. But certainly since I came down the escalator, you take a look at what's happened. And in he the meantime, our country — it doesn't matter what he says. Were, he's he trying to probably make a deal for himself. Doing Ukraine, you know I don't even know who this Ukraine. man is, other than I guess he attended fundraisers, so I take a picture with him. Uh, I'm in a room. I take pictures with people. I take thousands and thousands of pictures with people all the time, thousands during the course of a year. Uh, and it, oftentimes, I'll be taking a picture with somebody. I'll say, I wonder what newspaper that one's going to appear in. No, I don't know him. Perhaps he's a fine man. Perhaps he's not. I know nothing about him. But I can tell you this. I, I don't know him. I don't believe I've ever spoken to him. I don't believe I've ever spoken to him. I meet thousands of people. I meet thousands and thousands of people as president. I take thousands of pictures. Uh, and I do I, — and I do it openly, and I do it gladly. And then, if I have a picture where I'm standing with somebody at a fundraiser, like I believe I saw a picture with this — this man, but I don't know him. I had never had a conversation that I remember with him. So uh, he, certainly, he let me just tell you, you just have to take a look at the polls. Quiet. You just have to take a look at the pictures. You just have to take a look at the polls. You see, I don't need anybody's help. We're doing phenomenally well. The economy is the best it's ever been. We have never had an economy like this in history. We just made the two best trade deals in the history of our country. We are doing well. I don't need the help of a man that I never met before, other than perhaps taking a picture at a fundraiser or something, if that's where it was you taken. Sound like this. Mr. President, are you still going to Davos? And if you are, what's the message you want to send? I will probably be going to Davos. Uh, I've been invited. We have tremendous world leaders, and we also have the great business leaders, and we want those business leaders all to come to the United States. Some of the businesses left the United States because they were disgusted with what happened, and now they're all coming back. Uh, we are booming. Our country is the hottest country anywhere in the world. There's nothing even close. Every world leader sees me. They say, what have you done? This is the most incredible thing that we've ever seen. Uh, I understand the stock market today broke 29,000. When I came in, it was a fraction of that. It was a, a number that, frankly, would have gone, and it would have been cut in half had the other person or the other party won. The number would have been cut in half. Uh, we are doing so well, and I want to get more. We have tremendous room for growth in our country in terms of the economy. We have tremendous, powerful room for growth. So I'm going to be going to Davos. I'll be meeting the biggest business leaders in the world, getting them to come here. I'll also be meeting with foreign leaders, okay? Mr. President, you've been talking about prayer and faith today. What's your message to the millions of Catholics in the United States? Why should they vote for you in the upcoming election? Well, I have a great relationship with Catholics. I've done so much for Catholics. Uh, you take a look at uh, the abortion issue. You take a look at many of the issues Mexico City. You take a look at so many of the different issues. Uh, my relationship with uh, Catholics and the Catholic Church has been very, very good, as you know very well. Mr. Yes, Jeff, go ahead. Mr. President, uh, Rudy Giuliani wrote a letter to Zelensky uh, requesting a private meeting, and he said it was in his capacity as private counsel to President Donald J. Trump. This was before the inauguration. Did you authorize him to write that letter? And what was your understanding of what the meeting was supposed to be about? Well, I don't know anything about the letter, but certainly Rudy is one of the great crime fighters in the history of our country. He's certainly probably the best over the last 50 years. He was also the greatest mayor in the history of the city of New York. I think Rudy was uh, truly an outstanding mayor. It's an example. Uh, uh, his endorsement of Bloomberg got Bloomberg elected. He wouldn't have even been mayor. But Rudy was the greatest crime fighter, and uh, 
Rudy is is somebody that, frankly, having him on my side was a great honor for me, and it has been a great honor for me. Rudy Giuliani, Rudy Giuliani did a phenomenal job over a long period of time in fighting crime. And frankly, he's a very legitimate guy, a very straight shooter. I didn't know about a specific letter, but if he wrote a letter, it wouldn't have been a big deal. Rudy was always in — it was very important to Rudy that I be a great president, and that's okay with me. It was very important to a lot of people because our country was going to hell, and now our country's on a path that we haven't seen in decades and decades. We've never done better. Go ahead. Well, but, but no, no, trial, not you. Go ahead. The trial starting next week, what's your view on how long it should take? Well, I think it should go very quickly. It's a hoax. It's a hoax. Everybody knows that. Witnesses it's a, it's a complete hoax. The whole thing with Ukraine. So you have a perfect phone call. This is a call fortunate. It was actually two phone calls. You people don't report that. There were two calls. They were both perfect calls. In fact, probably among the nicest calls I've ever met made to foreign leaders. Now, so you have these perfect calls, and everybody says it now. Before they knew they were so good, because fortunately they were transcribed, you had other people saying terrible things about the calls. You had a fake whistleblower that wrote a report that bore no relationship to what was said. Everything was false. You have now the Ukrainian president and the foreign minister of Ukraine saying there was nothing done wrong. In fact, they said there was absolutely no pressure whatsoever. Everything was perfect, and they impeach. It's totally partisan. We had 195 to nothing Republican votes. I guess we got a Democrat actually came over to the Republican side. We had 195 to nothing. This is a hoax. It's a shame. I did the biggest deal ever done in the history of our country yesterday in terms of trade and probably other things, too, if you think about it. The deal with China. And that was the second story to a total hoax. Today, we just had passed the U.S. MCA. It's going to take the place of NAFTA, which was a terrible deal. And the U.S. MCA will probably be second to this witch hunt hoax, which hopefully everyone knows is not going anywhere. There was nothing done wrong. This was a perfect phone call. Think of it. The President of the United States, who's led the greatest growth, the greatest the greatest economic revival of any country anywhere in the world is the United States, as big as it is. We're doing better than any other country by far. Our unemployment numbers are the best they've been in over 50 years. African American, Asian American, Hispanic American, unemployment, the best in the history of our country. And I've got to go through a hoax, a phony hoax put out the, by the Democrats so they can try and win an election that hopefully they're not going to win. It was put out for purposes of winning an election. Our country is doing great. Our country has never done better. So they figured the only thing they can do, they failed on the Mueller report. That was a bomb. After two and a half years, they failed. Now they said, what can we do? And they pick up a phone call that was perfect. But they didn't know it was perfect. They only found out later. They made up a phone call. What they did, look, what they did. You have a corrupt person. He's a corrupt politician named Adam Schiff. And he made up a phone call. He went out — you'll hear about this as you grow older. He went out, and he said things that it, he said quid pro quo eight times. It was no times. He said, don't call me, I'll call you. That's a mob statement. I never said that. Fortunately, I released the transcript of the call. The transcript was perfectly accurate. And now everybody agrees, because it went through a lot. And they said, well, could you add one word here? Our lieutenant colonel said, well, I think they should add. They added the word. Everything — everyone agrees the transcript is perfecto, done by total professionals, right? But I released that after they had done these fraudulent acts. And you get impeached on this. We have the greatest economy in the history of our country. We have the highest job numbers today. It was just announced. We have more people working in the United States than ever before in the history of our country, almost 160 million people. We're doing an incredible job. Mr. And for President, absolutely no reason, and for absolutely no reason, I got impeached. It's a that? disgrace and it's a hoax. Thank you very much, everybody.